Yo, this is Big Bad's Life with another informative, informative, informative video, man. This time we have Dr. Umar Johnson, Mr. We Should Become Stepdaddies to Black Women and they Bastard Kids. Or that the reason why black women are not stepping up to the plate and being the strong queens they are is because black men are not stepping up to the plate. Black men are not being the men that we should be. This time we got Dr. Umar talking to a confused sister who is saying that black men are the reason why black women are becoming lesbians. Let's jump into it. I do stand up. I be saying I'm a I'm an escaped slave from South Carolina, so that really liberated me. But I do need to let you know I don't I don't want to catfish you or nothing like that. I am a part of the alphabet community, so I want to put that out there and lead with that, lead with truth and light. But I be making jokes in my stand up. I'm trying to lead. The <laughs> we gonna get back with love. Watch. I promise you, we gonna get back with love. I promise you. But let's get to the alphabet. I want to thank you for that. Let's get to the alphabet. What leads a woman? To the hot to the hyper masculine partner, aka stud, versus a strong heterosexual male. Why date a woman who is artificially posing as a strong black man versus having the organic, real strong black man? Why would a woman go to the female who's living her life as an artificial male versus with a real black man? Help me understand the psychology of that. She goes past the brother to the woman who's living her life for the most part as a man. Uh huh. Once again, I got to give my disclaimer. I, I don't identify as a stud and I have never dated one. So I don't, uh, I'm not but versed enough to speak. I'm it. not qualified enough to respond. But I, from my perspective, I can just give you my interpretation of what I've observed in being in yeah. the community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's simply kind of going back to what I said earlier, which is that to my, my impression is that you're basically just getting a safer version of a man, right? You're, you're, wow. you're getting a, you're getting a much, a, a version of a man that you can have a better chance of trusting. They're not gonna, you have a lesser chance of that stud abusing your children. You know, usually when there's a man present in the home that, uh, it's not his kids. There's a high level of like an abuse, a sexual abuse situation that's like very prominent and rampant in black communities and just communities worldwide. I mean, the Trump supporters talk about sex trafficking and all this stuff, how the United States government's involved in that. Like it's very deep. It's a very deep rabbit hole. And once again, I am not, a, I don't identify as a stud. I, I, I don't identify as masculine. You no, know, I've actually uh, said that. You know, I did a live before. Okay. Uh, lesbianism. And I said, the reason why sisters will go to a masculine woman instead of a masculine man is there's less risk for abuse. Yeah. Now, before we move on, like statistics show that there's more abusive uh, women to women relationships, more abuse, more domestic violent cases have been coming out about women on women relationships. They're more abusive. They become way more abusive. So for that to be a reason, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of like excusing women and kind of like throwing the, the, you know, throwing the whole concept that men are capable of way much more violence in terms of like domestic disputes. But it shows that women on women abuse is higher. But let's get back to it. This came to the lifestyle through abuse and abandonment at the hands of males. Father, sexual abuse, past spousal abuse with other men they've dated. In your experience, how do most of our sisters come to the lifestyle? Ooh, uh... Give me, give me, two, of the biggest, give me two of the biggest reasons they come into the lesbian community from, from, from your own experience. What brings our sisters there? The ones who choose it not the ones who say i was born like this i mean the ones who actually know that this was a conscious choice that i made uh what brings them to what what are some of the triggers you've seen that bring the sisters into it? uh men yes <laughs> and this idiot agrees yes, that has been my experience about, yeah. <laughs> so what advice would you have for men as it relates to our treatment of black women that you think could probably slow down the exodus from 
the heterosexual community to the uh, rainbow nation? Well, you know, uh, doctor, I'm, I'm working on some new stand-up material about this exact topic. It's, I think it's really going to shake the block. A lot of people are going to be upset, but you know, it is what it is. I feel, I feel that men hate women. I feel men resent women. I feel uh, women. Wow. Uh, I feel that men, I feel I mean, men I, resent women because I think women, uh, I think women have, you know, the one thing that men need. And I think men resent women for that. I think there's a lot of control over that. A lot of women, you know, we've come to a place where we have a lot of animosity. I think a lot of women have lost their way because of the single mother epidemic. And I think a lot of black women have been placed a thrust into a position of uh, leadership. So when you thrust into a leadership position in the black community, like you're not going to follow a man's lead. And that's the problem. You want protection and you want uh, financial backing, but you're, you, you want to lead. You can't lead a household. Then the ratchet behavior, just the dress code, everything is just off your mouth, the masculinity issues. It's like no man wants to lead another man. I don't want to be in a relationship with a man. So, and a lot of things, instead of you taking accountability, a lot of black women, and especially women in general, have thrown, you know, all responsibility on the man. Oh, I'm the reason why I'm ratchet. You're the reason why I'm ratchet. You're the reason why I'm a lesbian. You're the reason why the birth rate in the community is sky high. I guess I'm the reason why you got an abortion. I'm the reason why all of these things are happening. And that's not the case. Black women need to take ownership. And you got suckers, you got simps like Dr. Umar Johnson, who's pretty much pandering. He panders to the black community, the black women in specific, you know, and, and that's who pays his bills. That's who he's trying to get his school donations for. So this is the issue that we're dealing with in terms of like black men. So we got to separate the black men who are leading from the black men who are pandering. And evidently, you know, this is what he's doing. He's pandering to these women. And these women have a false understanding of what manhood is and what leadership is but let's get back into it but we looked this way from all the slave rape that was going on on the plantations because the black women just simply from existing apparently tipped at the colonizer so much and it led to the downfall and the spell and mind control that we're now under so the men have to lead with love and the women will follow but we are under so much mind control and we are under so much like evil propaganda we just have strayed so far from God's light. But if black men are able to find a way to stand up, and like you said, uh, I forgot how you worded it, um, phallus control. Yes. If, if, if we are able to get to a truth, and I wanted to talk to you about Ye, Kanye, and some of the other people too, because I feel you have a lot of animosity in that direction. And I understand what he's trying to do. He's also trying to lead with love and get us to truth. He gets lost along the way. He's a Gemini. He you know, I'm Gemini rising. You know, we fall. Nobody's alone, <laughs> but go ahead. But we got to lead with love. Uh, these bots and these AI, you just had a bot call you. Uh, you know, this AI is really out here. We have to fight. We have to fight with love. You know what I'm saying? We got to, because they, they're training the bots to fight and they come in with the hate. They just want to get you to engage. We have to start leading with love. As soon as the black men step up and lead with love and not lust, Will the black women will follow? I feel, but I also am not versed to speak on this because I don't date men. I mean, the only relationship I've been in is uh, with a man. Ever, and and what what age did you stop? Listen, Umar, you gonna end this live on me, Doc? The only man I've ever dated was a white man. The only man I've ever dated was a white man. Y'all want to stop here, or we can keep going because she didn't say it all. A mouthful. She said the only man she ever dated was a white man. So therefore, her understanding of what a man is or what responsibility as a man is coming through the colonizer. Now, all of that stuff she talked about, about history and about us being graped and all this other stuff, it's, it, you, you could throw it out the window. Your only history and your only experience was that of a white man. So you, you can't compare the two. You're outside. First of all, you're outside of your culture. And when you do experience it, you experience it with someone outside of your culture. But you're the same kind of women that want to exude and put all of these emphasis and raising the ball on black men. But when you experienced womanhood and experienced what it is to be a woman, you experienced it with a white guy. So who are you to get up here and talk to Dr. Umar 
and you see Dr. Umar's face, it never changed. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to end the live. Oh, snow bunny, this snow bunny, that. He didn't retort any of that. Matter of fact, he goes to light on her. Therefore, you know, you can't even pay him no mind. But yeah, these are the type of women that speak up and always got something to say about black men. But your existence of womanhood and experience the first time was with a white man. As you can see, she never dated a black man. You know, so how do you know what leadership looks like? And you never even crossed over the threshold. Let's get back to it and watch Dr. Umar's face. This Negro here. But I, that was when I was asleep. I was in my get out era. God woke me up. I got out. I'm halfway there. I got one leg in the elemental pin what, what community. What brought you with lesbianism then? Uh, I feel it was always there. I've always been very masculine, very tomboy. But I'm not, I don't identify with that label lesbian if we're getting into terminology and stuff. I'm queer. I'm still open to men. I just, um, you know, that it's it's just very fearful dealing with men. You can get STDs. You can get hair. You can get pregnant and unwanted pregnancy. There's a lot rolling the dice when you're dealing with, you know, cishet men. Now she talking all this, it's fearful dealing with men and, you know, men. Is, you know, I, I see through it. It's almost like... She don't have to say black men without saying black men. We know who she's talking about and who she's referring to. She's not referring to white men because it was definite. When she talked about her experience, she said, I've never been with a man. She said her first experience was with a white man. So she was very specific. But when she's talking about, oh, STDs and this, this and that and this and that, she's trying to encompass it by saying men. But we all know quietly under the scenes she's talking about black men she's talking to dr umar johnson dr umar johnson ain't talking about no white boys he ain't talking about hispanic men mexican men he talking about black men so when she make these references we know damn well she talking about black men but back to her and her snow bunny adventures with mr dr pander bear umar johnson okay i'm gonna put my psychology hat on real quick yes thank you when i hear your reasons I also hear trauma. Of course, that, but that's black so you, people's middle name is trauma. You've been through at least one traumatic relationship with a black man. I've never dated a black man. You hear this? Come on, man. Come on. Y'all see it. I never dated a black man. But you on here talking black. You talking to Dr. Blackness. Dr. Umar himself. Man, back to this. <laughs> no, no. It may have not been romance. It could have been biological father. Yeah, but, my, my mother says this. My father passed away when I was 12. My mom says that I have trauma about attached to that. Bro, you can't make this up, man. So he gives her out talking about trauma. It wasn't trauma when you dated the white guy. Once again, the black man is the reason. Not the black man she never dated, but her black father. The black father is the reason. She has trauma and the black man, she has so much disdain and trust for the black man. And this Negro here, supposed to be the psychologist, gives her enough rope to swing on by being accountable for her shit. And so who was your father figure from 12 into adulthood? Did you have one? Other men in my family felt close family friends, friends of his. My father was sort of like you. He was a community organizer and activist. Up, He was from Brooklyn, and um, there's a big mural up of him in Connecticut where he's buried in Stanford, where I was born. But, um, yeah, there were men around, but I, you're, you're not wrong. I'm agreeing with you. There has to be that figure in, in the home, present, physically you're there. You're getting a much... A, a, a version of a man that you can have a better chance of trusting they're not gonna you have a lesser chance of that stud abusing your children you know usually when there's a man present in the home that uh it's not his kids there's a high level of like an abuse a sexual abuse situation that's like very prominent and rampant in black communities and just communities worldwide i mean the trump supporters talk about sex trafficking and all this stuff how the united states government's involved in that like it's very deep it's a very deep rabbit hole and once again, I am not. A, I don't identify as a stud. I I, I don't identify as masculine. You no, know, I've actually uh, said that. You know, I did a live before. Okay. Uh, lesbianism, and I said the reason why sisters will go to a masculine woman instead of a masculine man is there's less risk for abuse. Yeah. I'm gonna cut it right here, man. 
I'm gonna cut it right here, man. This is Big Bass Life with another informative, informative video, man. Uh, what do you guys think, man? I think this woman is full of it. I think she's been sent to kind of like pander and troll black men like they all do. When you see a black woman like on spaces like this and they're talking about rape and abuse and this and that, and this woman has never been with a black man. Her first experience was with a white guy. And I don't even trust that. I think all of her experiences has been with white guys. You know, this is a young woman who doesn't even like identify as a woman. She identifies as something else. And I'm not here to disparage, you know, your, your sexual orientation. But if you don't know what you are, how do you know where you're going? You don't know where you're going if you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are and you find yourself in a whole different culture, you know, you might find yourself in a Jonathan Major situation. And no disparaging to that brother, but, uh, you know, quickly he came back to his cultural identity. He got a black woman, but they're in court. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't see the writing on the wall. And a lot of times these things we can't control. But this is Big Bass Life, man. With another informative, informative, informative video, man. Like, share, comment, man. Get back to it. I'm going to try to get on camera more often, man. So y'all can, you know, in real time. You can see it in real time. But, uh... Mm. Punch that. My biggest regret Punch the hell out of that is, subscribe uh, button and that like button, man. Let's get to time. it. All right. That's more time. That's more time. That's more time. That's more time. Fucking bitches. Bitch, she bad, got a lot more ass, nothing about me average Nigga get mad and they act like you ain't never had a motherfucker mad Chase these chickens, pop out, hit it, I'm gone, you drop out Box don't belong to you, cock block Got too many fives, need to drop out New Orleans, wet, wet, mop, mop Dreadhead, bummer, guy, top, pop Talk your shit, let a bop, bop Fall asleep, call the beat, bop, bop Dancing in the club with a drop top Just like a fuck, nigga, yop, yop Pull up in the cut, hit a pop, pop That's why I'm moving like Tupac